Hello there people of the sun, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me for one of these videos. I would really appreciate if you were to like and subscribe. Okay, today I'm, I'm gonna talk about something that has been happening in the media a lot and it keeps happening all the time. About how some uh, archeologists or even this kid, <laughs> they uh, find some mysterious Aztec and Maya city. This, in my opinion, is as ridiculous as Columbus discovering America. There is, has been a lot great and a lot of history and a lot of exploitation as to what Mexican and Guatemalan and Belizean archaeologists have in their backyard. They know what's there, they may not know what it's called, and they don't make a big deal about it, but they know it's there. In fact, it doesn't take very much for anybody to see what's there. I'm gonna leave a link for a guy who's kind of like the Mexican Indiana Jones and he does it just for YouTube, he's, he's amazing. Anyway, thank you very much and let's go. Now the history of uncovering mysterious hidden cities is not new. Not to us, not to our previous generation, not to the 1900s, it's not. When the Spanish first arrived into this continent in the early 1500s, late 1400s, they made a great ruckus about these mysterious lands. They described giants of uh, being like five meters tall. They described cities like El Dorado, other hidden cities where there were wise and sages and um, mythical people that had three breasts, believe it or not. They not only talk about these fantastical things that they were never able to prove, but they also publish them in different types of books. And this has created a perpetual tradition of exaggerating and misappropriating and misrepresenting the people of Mesoamerica, particularly the Aztec and the Maya. Um, there were Spanish that came to this continent primarily for gold and silver. There were some that came here and looked for spices or things that they could, tr they could trade in the old world because people still thought that Christopher Columbus might have been correct and this, uh, this continent was the Indies and not uh, America, as the letter was called. There were some people that came here to try to settle because their lives were unbearable in the old world and with the hierarchy that they came with, thanks to the Catholic Church and the Spanish armies, they were able to enslave the natives. This really didn't end in Mexico until the end of 1860 with Benito Juarez and the institution of the constitution and with forms of government and view, views of how to look at being a Mexican and what does it mean being a Mexican. And so there has been a great, there, there has been always a long history of usurping on Maya people, on the Aztecs, and as people, and as a tradition, and as a culture. Uh, this has been, in my opinion, one of the greatest holocausts that has ever been perpetuated on any human race. And I would like to, I'm making this video in an attempt to try to somehow change the way we look at these people and the way we look at their culture and the way we look at their history. Now, this continent had many treasures. Uh, the Spanish initially came for gold and silver. They found it. The ceilings of the castle in Segovia were covered with it. But that didn't last very long. In fact, Cortes regretted at the end of his life uh, handing over this kingdom to the king of Spain because he lacked the recognition and the power that he was hoping to gain. And as a result, they settled here and they got what was really the treasure, which was the people and the land. Uh, Cortes and all of his accomplices in this crime of genocide decided to settle. Cortes decided to settle in the state of Oaxaca. 
and they enslaved people, they profited from them, even though it was never really called a slavery, it was certainly slavery. And the empire of New Spain, which was a rogue empire, the king of Spain really have, didn't have that much power. He profited from it, but he didn't have a lot of control over it because he was so far away. A stretch from maybe southern Oregon, the United States, Utah, including California, New Mexico, Texas, all the way down to South Argentina, South Chile. This was the empire of New Spain. And one of the saddest traditions of this genocide is that it still perpetuates to this very day. In one way or another, we as Mexicans, we still put down the indigenous people. We still ridicule them for speaking Nahuatl or speaking Maya or speaking Otomi. A lot of these people, they tend to kind of isolate themselves within the gigantic metropolis that can be Mexico City. I have met many of them that speak Nahuatl as a first language. They, their Spanish is kind of broken and that is one of the reasons why they also make fun of them. Uh, a lot of Mexicans will much rather buy from Walmart, buying disposable garbage, than buying fruits and vegetables from our native people who still uh, they plant and they harvest wherever they can, even though sometimes it may be illegal. This is heartbreaking to me because this continent belongs to them. It doesn't belong to us. Us that are somehow kind of mixed with Spanish and we mix with something else. We don't own this land. It belongs to them. And I think that we owe a, a token of reverence and gratitude to, to, to these people for the history and the tradition and for being here before we were and for maintaining it and for giving us the opportunity to, to be here and to partake of the richness of this land. The Guatemalan government has even gone farther into exterminating these native people. During the 1990s, there was a revolt where the indigenous people, mostly Maya, they rose up against the government in protest for a violation of the treaties. And the government retaliated by exterminating 200,000 of these people for no other uh, crime but to protest for rifle rights. So when a white person comes in and tries to tell us we have discovered a mystery, mysterious Maya city, it is insulting. It is insulting because we know it's there. Uh, most Mexicans, we know it's there. Guatemalans, they know it's there. Uh, yes, some of the stuff has been sacked, particularly because people are hungry and people know that they can make a buck out of stealing uh, archaeological pieces from unknown temples and selling them in the black market or even selling them in the market. I have seen them. And this is a sad state of affairs, but it is insulting when white people say, oh, I have discovered this land. It, is, it would be really nice for American and European universities to, come, to calm their ego down a little bit and to listen to native archaeologists a little bit more. Most of the time when a certain site, sites get funded for digging, they try to contract one of, the, one of the native archaeologists. That is a nice thing, but I, I wish that n native archaeologists were able to get more funding for their digs. Uh, in fact, the city of uh, Palenque, when the white academics came into Palenque, or went into Palenque, to try to see what was there, what was the city called. They, had, they listened to a Mexican archaeologist that they should name it Palenque, and then eventually they found that the king was uh, King Pakal uh, Shield. And so the name is fitting, but the most of the names of the archaeological sites in Mexico have, have Spanish names. Uh, which is once again insulting because a lot of Maya cities, we know their names. I know they're hard to pronounce and they don't go very well with our vocabulary, but they, we should, uh, oh, we, we owe them a level of respect and we should yeah, definitely pay our respects by naming them the names that they were named by the creators of those cities. But if you like to discover your own mysterious Maya city, <laughs> this is your chance. 
Uh, a lot of the sites in Mexico, they have been uncovered thanks to INA. Uh, in Guatemala, it is, uh, you may have a little bit of a shot going southern Guatemala. They have some areas right there that are not completely excavated, but south of Belize, that's where the money is. South of Belize is where there is, has not been a lot of research done. It is difficult to penetrate because there's a lot of swamp plant. There's, uh, there are no roads, and so if there are roads, they don't connect with the main uh, city of Chetumal. And so, if you would like to discover your Maya city, I would recommend going south of Belize or possibly south of Guatemala. Now, in this map, we see a lot of um, Maya cities. Some of them are marked, some of them are not. Uh, but this is the official or one of the official maps that have comes out out of Mexican archaeology and so if there is a map in, in if there's a city in this map that does not show one of the cities that you think might not be there there is an also city that you might be able to discover and put your name in the records of academic Maya history some of the cities here uh, that have not been uncovered, in fact, they, just, they know they're there, but they haven't uncovered them, is namely Punit and uh, Pusilha, which uh, these cities are in the south of Belize. And this is really a mysterious place to have a lot of cities because it seems that a, a comet landed close to uh, Cancun or Merida and cover the whole area with volcanic rock or just 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 a lot of stone and it is hard sometimes to plant anything there and so the reason why so many people settled there it is very mysterious we still do not really quite understand it we know it's old because some people have scuba dived in the area of uh, Cancun in the area of Quintana Roo the area of Belize and they have found caves and these caves have uh, archaeological remains that are actually sunken cities in between Cuba and Cancun. And so there's a lot of mystery as to who lived there, why were there so many people, but, there's, uh, but it's obvious that there was a lot of relationships, some of them not very friendly relationships. We have a long history of problems between the city of Calakmul and Tikal, uh, like Mexico versus Guatemala <laughs> in the World Cup qualifiers and so the, 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 the history there it is very interesting the fact that the Maya calendar only goes back to like 2600 BC or where thereabouts is also very interesting is not because the Maya thought that the world was made then my assumption is that that's when they first were able to get in contact with a familiar or a god that was able to teach them time. Uh, once again, a god is kind of like something that for the Maya was something that kind of lived inside of them. It's not something like external, like an alien or something weird. Um, it's just something inside of them from their own mind was able to inspire them to learn about time or to learn a new skill or to learn something. If you like to know more about what is my view or a realistic view of what a familiar is, go look at my familiars and I'm in magic video. Anyway, I hope this video uh, brings some awareness into discovering Maya cities <laughs> or into uh, how do we treat the people that are native to those lands. Anyway, thank you very much and have a great one. Bye-bye.